Hi everybody! For today's video, we are going to be making a dog sweater and the materials that you will be needing to make this. You will need some yarn. I am using two colors and I am using Vanna's Choice. And um, this color is in white. This is a medium four worsted weight yarn. And this one is in aquamarine. Of course, you can use any color or colors that you would like. Today's hook, we will be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And of course, you are going to need uh, a weaving needle and also some scissors to cut and to weave in those ends. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. To begin, we are going to start with the white color. To begin, chain 26. One, two, three, four, five, six, 24, 25, and 26. After we have 26 chains, you are going to straighten out the, the uh, chain and then you're going to slip stitch to join to the top of the chain right here. And you're going to slip stitch that through to the top right there to create a circle so we will work in rounds. We will now be working in rounds and this is round one so for round one chain three one two and three and this is going to count as a double crochet so we are going to double crochet all the way around and we aren't going to put anything into this chain right here so we are going to go into the second chain right here Just like that and as you can see I am uh, double crocheting over that straggler because I do not want to tuck that in later so you can work over this or you can tuck this in later but I don't like to do that so go ahead and continue to work one double crochet all the way around Okay, to begin round two, it's going to get a little, it's going to be very different for you. I'm not going to say it's difficult because it's not difficult, but it's going to be a little different. For this pattern, we are working backwards because I am making a turtleneck sweater versus a regular ribbed neck dog slash cat sweater so if you want you can make the rib and the band as thick or thin as you want um, you can easily start off by chaining three and then front post double crochet and then double crochet into the next stitch but I am NOT going to do that we are working backwards because when when we make the turtleneck when we turn the sweater inside out we want to see those ribs so we are going to chain three one two and three and this is going to count as our very first double crochet so we do nothing there so into this very next stitch we are going to work a back post double crochet okay so on the other side we will be actually making a front post double crochet but when you work a stitch backwards then it does the opposite on the other side so we are going to do a back post double crochet into the stitch and if you don't know what a back post double crochet is um, it's basically a double crochet around the post which I will show you slow slower how to do it so into this next stitch we're going to do right here a double crochet okay if you know how to do a double crochet it should be very easy for you to catch on to the back post double crochet so a back post double crochet is a double crochet but around the post like I said and what we are going to do is yarn over and then put the hook right here stick it out right there and then stick it through the back okay then you're going to pull that down and through and up Okay, and you're going to have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two. Now this is not a, mand uh, a mandatory stitch that you guys have to do. I am doing this for the sake of the sweater because when we turn it inside out, these ribs will show, like I said. And you could do a typical uh, chain three, uh, front post double crochet and then double crochet and make it uh, thick or as thin as you want, like I said. So into the next stitch, we're going to work a double crochet. And then again, work a back post double crochet and then work a double crochet and then work a back post double crochet and as you go along it's going to start looking a little weird and uh, holding the 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 rib of the neck right here is going to be a little harder to hold and it's going to start crunching up a little bit but don't worry that'll work out in the long run so continue in this fashion, putting a double crochet and then into the next stitch, putting a back post double crochet. Okay, so now in the end, you will end with a back post double crochet. And then we want to slip stitch to the top of the chain three right there. So there's one, two, and then three right there. And we want to slip stitch. Okay, so it looks a little funky and it's going to feel a little weird, but I promise it's going to look good. So if you look at the inside, as you can see, it's doing the ribbing effect that we would nor normally do uh, facing us this way, but we're not going to do it that way because we're going to make a turtleneck. So from row two all the way until we get to row two, <laughs> um, we're going to complete round two all the way until we reach round eight. So you're going to repeat this chaining three and then into the next stitch we'll put a back post double crochet and then into the next stitch after we will place a double crochet and then just keep repeating that in that same fashion all the way until we reach round eight and if you are uh, customizing this for your dog and you just are like, I don't really want a turtleneck for my dog. Well, that's fine too. All you have to do is just do the front post double crochet and the double crochets, like I said. And you don't have to um, follow this exactly the way I'm doing it. Because um, some people may not want that for their, their dogs or to have to do all this work. You may want a simple sweater. So... I will be back as soon as I get to the end of round eight. Up to the end of round eight and you're probably like tripping out <laughs> and this does look like a honeycomb, doesn't it? Yeah, this looks really weird. It looks actually like the waffle cone if you take a good look at it, but when you look on the inside pull my hook out when you flip it inside out you got this effect and that's what we want so when we turn our uh, little turtleneck inside out this will come out instead of this so we're working from the inside out to move on we are going to chain one and we are going to increase and what we are going to do is single crochet into that same stitch that we just chained up right now. Chain one, single crochet into that same stitch. Next stitch, place an increase of two single crochets. There's one and two. And then into the next stitch, place one single crochet. And then into the next stitch, place two single crochets, one and two, then one single crochet into the next stitch, and then an increase of two. That's two single crochets, whoops. Okay, so that's going to be the repeat all the way around, putting one single crochet and then two single crochet. Okay, so in the end, we will have a total of 39 and 
we're going to slip stitch to join to the first single crochet chain one and then finish off and I'm going to change my color pull that through and I'm going to grab aqua marine yeah I'm gonna grab aqua marine after you have used the method that you like to use to color change you want to chain three and you are going to double crochet into every stitch around and you don't put one into the same stitch because that is going to count again as a double crochet so work around placing one double crochet and as you can see as well I am working over those stragglers so after I finish I do not have to tuck them in because there is nothing more annoying than stragglers <laughs> and weaving in ends it's not a crocheter's favorite right okay so I have come to the end and I believe this is round 9 so 8, 9, oh, 10 we're on round 10 we are moving on to round 11 and we're just going to chain three like we have been doing and by now you could fold this if you want to but I'm gonna wait until the end so I can show you guys how cute it looks and you guys can always pinch this a little bit more open if you want because it is a little more enclosed because of the stitch we are using so repeat what we did this last row I'm sorry round and just continue to put one double crochet around it's just this is a very simple pattern and believe it or not I didn't even write a pattern this is actually going off the top of my head right now I decided to just get on camera and naturally make a dog sweater in this size Decided to turn this inside out because <laughs> um, it was starting to get in my way so I decided to flip it over but this is how it's gonna look and you can fold it more which is why we worked inside out so we can have this beautiful ribbing there it looks really fashionable and it looks very cute if I had a little tiny dog I would definitely love that about the sweater Okay, so now we are going to uh, create the armholes here and we are going to double crochet in the next two stitches, one and two, and there should be a total of three because the chain three counts as a double crochet. We're going to chain up five, four, and five yarn over one two three four five into the sixth stitch right there we're going to place our double crochet to join and there's our first little armhole and now we are going to double crochet until we get to the other side and that is see with this stitch this is one two three four five and 25 okay so counting from the chain up we're gonna count six one two three four five six Seven. so this is 26 stitches so chain up five one one two three four and five Got a little ahead of myself there <laughs> okay so we are counting one two three four five and six that's this uh, right here is the one we want to connect to so double crochet to join because we want four stitches in the front okay 
And there's our second little armhole. Top of the chain three. Okay, so after that, we are going to chain three. And so here is row 10, 11, 12. So we are moving on to round 13. And we are going to double crochet into these first two stitches. And we will have a total of three. So that chain three is our very first double crochet. And over here is the armholes known as the chain bridge and that's what I refer to them as. So we have one, two, three, four, five chains and we are going to double crochet once in each of them. So put your double crochet into the stitch. One. Whoops. One. Two, three, four, and five, right here. Now it's very important that you go into this next stitch that's right here, which is our double crochet to join. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now we want to double crochet all the way until we reach the other side. There's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have 34 stitches all the way from here to right here. So now we are going to add five more stitches. So we have 34, did you say 34? I think I said 34. 34 stitches, there's 34. And put one double crochet each, 35. 36, 37, 38, 39, and here is a 40 stitch right here. Okay, and we are going to slip stitch to the top of the chain three. We are going to continue to work one uh, chain three and then put one double crochet all the way around. So this is 12, 13. So we are going to work this until we reach round 16, chain three, and put one double crochet all the way around. And this is round 14. Now I believe so this is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, yeah, so we are on round 14. And I will meet you guys when we get to the end of round 16. Okay, so we've come to the end of round 16. And this is what it should look like so far. And I unfolded my, my necking again. Just to show you guys what it looks like. So I'm going to cut this and you can always add more rows of the belly if you want but I'm going to cut it off here and I'm going to chain one and finish off and we are going to reattach and finish the backing. Okay so there's the chain three and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's the ninth stitch. And when we join, I do not want to count my stitch, um, which is the chain three. I do not want to count that stitch because we are working 
along the sides and it will become holy when it comes time to put um, a stitch in there. So chain three and you are going to double crochet into the same stitch. Okay. Just like that. And we are going to double crochet until we reach the other side. So there's one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And twenty-eight. Now to tell if they line up pretty well is if you put both holes together and see if they match up. So if they do match up like that, then you you know you know you're on the right track. So that's what it should look like. So I am not worried about this straggler because this straggler, I'm going to crochet over it when I have to single crochet around it. So for now, we are going to chain three, turn our work, and we are going to make sure that we put one double crochet into that very same stitch where we chained up. So put your first double crochet into there and then continue to place one double crochet into the next stitches to where we started. Now I just wanted to mention to you guys, it may look like you're, you are missing a stitch but you're not because that does not count as a stitch so you're going to chain three and again work one double crochet across and into the same stitch so just working back and forth is what you are doing until you get the length that you need and like I said I did not write a pattern for this so there is no exact um, row that I'm going to. I'm just going to keep working this row until I feel like this is the uh, appropriate length for the dog or the kitten. So I am currently on row two, I believe. One, two, three. Oh, actually, I'm on row three. I guess I worked up pretty quickly. So continue to work these rows until you get the length that you need. And I will be back as soon as I reach the length that I want. Okay, so I am back. I have done a total of seven rows from beginning to end. And our work looks very uneven because of those um, chain threes that do not count. But it's okay because we are going to straighten that out. I'm going to go back to the color uh, white that we have been using, which we have used for the neck part. And I'm going to reattach that to where our chain three is. And you are going to begin with a slip knot. Begin by placing a slip knot onto your hook. And I am going to work over the straggler. Okay, so what we are going to do is attach our hook and our yarn to where we had finished off. And you can start anywhere you want to, but I'm going to start right here. And I am going to pull that through. 
chain one and single crochet all the way around and I am going to single crochet into this very same stitch and then single crochet into the second stitch and then single crochet into the third and you can continue working all the way around and when you get to the corners all you have to do is you can either put two or even three single crochets to turn your corners for me I am going to put three single crochets and then when you are working into these you can work one per chain where the chain three is or you could do one single crochet per row and that's really up to you okay so I am almost at the end and I'm just gonna single crochet into this last stitch and then Right here, the first single crochet, we are going to slip stitch to join. Okay, and then chain one and then finish off. And you might want to cut your tail a little long so then you have the appropriate length to weave in your ends really well. Okay, so I am going to weave these ends in and I will be back as soon as I finish that. Okay, so we are now going to make the arm, the arms here, and what we want to do is slip stitch to this first stitch right here to the corner. And I just wanted to mention too, uh, you can always customize how big you want the armholes to be. If this may be a little too small for your pup or your kitten, you can make this a little bit bigger by just chaining uh, as many as needed. Okay, so I'm going to start off by chaining three. And if you have been a subscriber of mine for a while now, you guys already know pretty much just how my armholes always work and how I usually design them. So the chain three is going to count as our very first double crochet. So the next stitch we will place a double crochet into that space right there. And then we will continue to place one double crochet around evenly and meaning uh, that we want an even number in the end so just make sure that you have an even number actually this is not cooperating with me okay so Place a double crochet in each stitch. We have one, two, three, four, five. And right here is the sixth stitch. And then we're going to turn our work to the side. And we don't want a hole right here, so we are going to put our seventh stitch right here. So there's seven. Working upside down now, there is eight. Here is nine. There is ten. There is eleven. Turning the work, there's 11, there's 12, there's 13 here, and the next one is 14, okay? And that's what you want. You want an even number. You do not want an odd number because um, the way we're doing the arms is supposed to... Uh, be designed like this and with this working in the round has to be uh, an even number so 
we are at the end of round one and we are going to repeat what we did at the neck but we are working the outside that way so we are going to chain three one two and three so this will count as our very first double crochet so we do nothing here oops <laughs> So this will count as a very first double crochet, the chain three. So in the next stitch, we will do a front post double crochet. Next stitch will be a double crochet. Next stitch is a front post double crochet. And we will continue to work this all the way around and we will end with a front post double crochet. So after this round, all you have to do is just chain one and then single crochet into every stitch and then finish off and that's about it. That's what that looks like. So go ahead and weave in your ends. I'm going to finish this other side and I will be back just to show you what the sweater looks like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please do not forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. If you guys have any suggestions for any future videos that you guys would like to see, please leave them in the comment box below as well. So um, you can always make this adjustable for your pet. If this is still a little too big for your little teacup chihuahua, you can always go down a hook size and go down to a four millimeter crochet hook. And I just want to thank everybody for continuously supporting my channel, leaving me emails, sending pictures of your pets. And if you haven't already, before you leave, please make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell below. So every video that I post, you will be notified immediately. So you can check out my free patterns. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.